Yo soy boricua, pa' que tú lo sepas. Hey, I'm Leslie Ambriz, and you're watching Third Culture Conversations. Hey, I'm Manolo Lopez, and this show is about belonging and embracing your identity. My name is Esteban Gast, and today we're talking about expanding the definition of third culture kids. Third culture kids was originally a term used by kids who grew up in a different culture than their parents. Us three love talking about culturally complex situations and culturally complex people who straddle multiple cultures. How would you guys think about a third culture kid if we expand that definition? It's kids who, you know, whose parents immigrated here or who are even second generation, who, you know, it's their grandparents who came over, who are just trying to figure out where they fit in. I've always heard it said, like, we are the 200%. We are 100% our, um, our parents' heritage. We are also 100% American at the same time. To me, third culture just resonates with the evolution of where we all come from, where our grandparents come from, where our parents come from, and where we're going. Speaking of where you're from, all three of us, we got a lot of similarities in the way that I think we, we think about these things, but a lot of differences in the way that we grew up. Let's talk about it. Oh, okay. Let's, let's talk let's about it. Let's do it. Let's talk about it. Leslie, where are you from? What's Me? your story? Yeah. I'm from Los Angeles, born and raised. Um, so, hey, uh, in the working class suburbs of LA, so right on the outskirts of the city. Predominantly Mexican and Southern and Central American, more specifically. And yeah, that's where, that's where I'm from. Oh, and my parents are from, um, originally, both my parents are from Mexico. And you're like, I'm Chicana. Yeah, all the way, 100% Chicana, and I love that that term means means that blend for me. I am of Mexican descent, but I'm also fully American. That's great, Manolo. What about you? Yo soy Boricua, pa que tú lo sepa. Uh, I'm from the west side of Puerto Rico. I was born in Mayagüez and I was raised in Aguada. Uh, I'm very proud of that, and my identity is that mix of. Spanish blood, African blood, and Taino Indian blood, and that's how I identified as, as a Boricua. And Manolo, you're not just from Puerto Rico. You are Mr. Puerto Rico. This dude's been on billboards, Puerto Rico. This dude uh, has started Puerto Rican restaurants, gone all around the world with Puerto Rican food. Right, you went to like Japan a little bit ago? Yeah, we've done, we've done pop-ups with our traditional dishes, mofongo, all around the world. And I think that at the point of that intersection in my life where I embraced who I was, I also knew that the businesses and brands that I wanted to create had to celebrate my culture because I'm out here trying to show everyone what makes us so unique. So everything that I've done is, is hopefully making the island proud and will continue to do so moving forward. And Manolo, I have to ask, what's the key to the perfect mofongo? Um, your mom has to teach you, and her, her <laughs> mom has to teach you. Uh, but it's just, you need a pilong. You need a wooden pilong, and you need the green plantains, and you need that garlic, and the chicharrón, and the adobo spices. And it's just, it's, it's gotta be something that's handed down from generations. Got it, so I'll, I'll, I'll need to hit up a, a Puerto Rican friend to help me make some of that. Because <laughs> clearly I can't. Yeah, I, my nose answer is like, well, you can't make it. Leslie. You can't make it. That's not yeah. what I said. Come I on, mean, guys. I'll, I'll make it on I set for you guys. Of, hey, okay, <laughs> this show is about inclusion, but <laughs> if you want to make them a fungal, find a new show. <laughs> Get out of here. Oh my god, how about you, Esteban? I am the son of two Colombian immigrants. I was born in New Jersey when my dad was finishing his PhD. I was born in April, and then by that fall, we were in Puerto Rico, we were in Mayagüez. That's right. Uh, and I lived there for six years and then moved to Chicagoland and bounced around Illinois and central Illinois and then Panama um, and then moved to LA a few years ago. I think my story's been a, a big journey. I think the way I think about identity, especially like cultural identity, is this journey. And I mean, I think I went through phases where I was like embarrassed to be Colombian and unoriginal kids would be like, oh, you know, narco or drugs and like oh, wow. all these iffy, <laughs> bad stereotypes. Stereotypes. Because oh there's God. nothing else on TV, right? Wait, there's... what did you respond to them when they would say that? Um, you know, I don't know. I don't think I was. <laughs> I think I was just like, no, 
I needed to be wittier. That's where I developed this wit. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I remember giving a presentation at school and someone, someone raised their hands and the teacher did nothing. Someone raised their hand and goes, does your family sell drugs? And I was, it was a presentation on Columbia. I was like, I was so proud to give it. And I, and then, yeah, no one did anything. Did it break your heart? Oh yeah, Aww. it broke my tiny little heart. Especially living in places where, where, where I'm like one of the few Latinx uh, students. I think it's been this journey where I'm, where I'm like sometimes ashamed and reject the culture and sometimes I embrace it, right? So I, then I think like even in college in, in those one year I was like into the fraternity and I was like, guess I'm white, <laughs> call me Steve. <laughs> and then the next year I was like into activism and La Casa Cultural and I helped them start a newspaper. This is in the span of whatever, nine months. So I think, I think for me it's been this journey. The two of you seem more comfortable in your cultural identities, but do you have moments where, where you've rejected or you've embraced your culture? Because I think those are conversations we don't have very often, right? It's sort of embarrassing for me to sit here and be like, I didn't want to be me. <laughs> um, but have you had those moments? Do you also feel like it's this journey that we're on? Like, yeah. Oh, I can, I can tell you right now, I rejected my culture growing up in Puerto Rico. I was fortunate enough to go to private school. And when you go to private school, most of the lessons are in English. Uh, but the lesson of history was also in English and it was the history of North America. And that deprived me of the history of my island. Now, I grew up Americanized, Nickelodeon, Disney, and sync, uh, Jay Z's, and I really didn't know much of the island. When I was of age, I moved to New York, and I thought that was what I wanted, and I thought that anything up north was better than what was going on on the island. And I was slowly understanding that there was a part of me that was missing. And it was actually the knowledge and the history that I needed to acquire of my island and those in the diaspora that moved out. And I, I'm proud to say that I learned how to be Puerto Rican in New York when I moved out of Puerto Rico because I started learning about our history. I started learning about our music, La Salsa de Fania. I started retaking ancestral, ancestral food uh, from our Afro Boricua culture. And to me, that was the point where I was I took too long to, to, to understand and be grateful of what I had only until I moved out and lost it. Do you, are you still an equal fan of NSYNC and Jay-Z? Uh, only Jay-Z. You're saying you're growing up in Puerto Rico and they're like, in, in the mainland, NSYNC is there and you're like, I gotta get there. Like, they did a lot of promotion in Puerto Rico hey, for Hey, that bye bye bye, it goes, it goes hard, you know? That's fine. <laughs> I love it, man. Thanks for sharing. I think for me it was a weird it was a weird journey of a lot of um, I think I dealt with I know I know I dealt with a lot of self hatred growing up where I wasn't proud at all to be um, to be Mexican American I I wanted to be every like everything but and so you know go even just going on that journey and it wasn't until actually until I got to college that I finally started to to open my eyes in college it happened because. I went to a predominantly um, white private university and I was like, oh wow, like this is me being Mexican American, me being born and raised in Los Angeles, like this is what makes me different and this is what makes me stand out and not just like everybody else. And so I really started to embrace that in that sense and that's when I just went like all the way in. But I think even back in the rejection with like my self-hatred a lot. Strangely, a lot of it came from being made fun of by like my family members or from, you know, friends who were, who were Latinx, who would call me whitewashed. Just all these things where it was like, if I liked anything that was outside of Mexican culture, to, to them, or at least the way that I felt they were portraying it, felt like, okay, well, if I like this indie alternative, my space skinny white boy music like <laughs> then that means i'm not like mexican enough or that means i won't be latinx enough so i felt like this rejection from my culture which led to a lot of self-hatred um which even though i was proud in a lot of other senses it was still very like very in me like in my soul and in my spirit so that took a lot of dismantling honestly it took a lot of dismantling and i'm i'm like really proud and excited to say that i don't think there's even like point 0001% 0, 0, 0, 0, 
of an ounce left in me of that where I'm now just, you know, who I am unapologetically, this beautiful blend of, of being born here but being of Mexican descent. I remember going to Colombia and being like, hola, como están? And they, you know, family members, yeah, lovingly, but being like, hola, como estas? And I was like, yo creo que yo hablo diferente. And they're like, yo creo que hablo diferente. Yeah, and, words and hurt. They'd, they'd be like, what? <laughs> Um, oh my God. But that's what that's what this show is about, right? Mm. In every episode, we are sitting down with incredible people who help us navigate the cultural complexities, while also us reflecting on what it means to be a third culture kid. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you soon. So pancake, so